Happy New Year. And just like that, it's 2020. Welcome back. This is the Fearless Training Raw Knowledge Podcast. I'm your host, as always, Alex Connor. And this is where we talk everything training, nutrition, and lifestyle collectively. Now, first of all, I hope everyone has had a cracking, belting start to the new year. If you've not, no matter, tomorrow's another day. It's just another day. The best time to start is always now. And we've got plenty of days in this upcoming year. And then after that, there'll be another year because there's always more. (laughs) But we've got to live in the now. And speaking of the now, I have got one of the most valuable episodes here today, especially for those of you who are thinking about entering the personal training industry, perhaps for those of you who are already in the personal training industry and you're not doing quite as well as you'd hoped or you think you should be doing or you want to be doing. And I'm going to recommend from the start that you listen to this episode, go back, listen to it again, and then go back and listen to it one more time, just to be sure. I want you to really be present in this episode I highly recommend taking notes. I highly recommend it implementing what is talked about. So my guest is Matt Richardson, commonly known as Richo. He is a fellow strength and conditioning coach whom I have the pleasure of working alongside at EMF. And I've been wanting to have a chat to Richo for a while now. When I got back full-time into the industry about 12 months prior back on the tools, as we can we can call it, refer to it as. The PT podcast, which is a podcast of which Richo appears on, along with Chris Mooney, who I've also had on the podcast, and another personal trainer, Nathan. And they talk about a lot of the strategies, a lot of the ins and outs of personal training and why a lot of people are not able to make a success of it. And I took a lot of value from these episodes and I noted every single episode out because that's the kind of person I am. And I started to formulate my own business plan out of that. And that was one of the key things that really helped me. However, I won't go on about that too much on this intro because we go into a lot more depth on this podcast um, in correlation to specifically what you should be doing when you enter the industry as a personal trainer or what you should be doing and continue to do if you want to be a world-class top tier personal trainer, strength and conditioning coach and set yourself above the rest. A little bit about Richo, although he does a terrific intro himself and I'm going to let him do the legwork on this one because he does a superb job at detailing his journey from the start and his entry into the industry and what that looked like to give you a perspective because always the backstory tells a lot and a lot of the time it's not just someone falling into a successful role it's a lot of what they've done previously which germinates success so richo has been personal training for over 11 years now and his passion for the industry is very present and it keeps growing as you will find in this episode it's very contagious it's very present In 2015, he was a head strength and conditioning coach of the Australian Gridiron team, and he's coached many other high-performing athletes and individuals. He specializes in sports, strength and conditioning, powerlifting, and lean muscle gain. His passion is to help everyone from all walks of life be as happy and as confident in their own skin as possible while performing to levels that they never thought achievable. And again, we go into a lot of the weeds We map it out, we go into the different sectors and we break it down and we address those areas and what you need to understand, what you need to become competent at and how you need to build up and give you a bit of a roadmap. So there's a lot of very actionable key takeaways in this episode, hence why I'm recommending you listen to it more than once. And also because we see daily on the gym floor, on social media, personal trainers consistently getting it wrong getting it so wrong and they wonder why they are not able to achieve results, build a successful or a reputable business. And a lot of it comes down to even just ethics and just being a good person and giving a shit. 
Simple stuff, guys. Absolutely gold. You're going to love this one. A lot of exciting projects and upcoming events coming in 2020. Keep your eyes peeled. Stay fearless. Without further ado, enjoy this first podcast of 2020 between myself and Richo. Richo, finally on the podcast, my man. Mate, it's going to be good. It is. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Now, I know a lot of the listeners are going to know who you are yeah. for the most part, but for those who are not aware, give us a bit of a background, a synopsis, who you are, what you do, why you do it. Okay. Okay. Uh, look, mate, I started PTing when I was 18. I fell in love with a gym when one of my friends took me when I was 16. He was like an older brother to me and we went to the gym and... I just fell in love with it. And then that's what I wanted to do. So I started doing all my Cert 3. I did my Cert 3 in year 11 as a school-based apprenticeship type thing. And then in the summer between year 11 and year 12, so when I was still 17, I did my Cert 4. So I was actually qualified before I was 18, but you can't start trading until you're 18. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Went in under, uh, went under the banner of a guy called Doc from down in Geelong that ran that course for about six months and um, went out on my own. Um, and that was in 2008. So here we are, 2009, almost 2000, sorry, 2019, almost 2020. Like, you in a time machine, yeah, like, bro. I, I, was, I was. He's had a busy day, yeah, this man. 2019, 2020. So, I mean, 11 years on and I still love it like it was the first day. So um, did my Cert 3, did my Cert 4. Um, moved up to the Gold Coast because of work. I mean, Geelong's only a small, uh, look, it's the second biggest city in Victoria, but it's still only a small town in its mindset. Yeah. Um, people won't pay more than $50 for a personal trainer. Even people, even spending that, people like, uh, um, the weather's crap down there, so people don't care about um, their health and how they look. So I was like, well, I've got to move to a major city and Melbourne wasn't my cup of tea, so, I ended up here in 2011, right. so I've been up here ever since. So along the way, I've done um, metabolic precision. Um, I've done Westside Barbell Special Strength Certificate. Done my diploma in fitness. Um, I'm currently doing. Um, I'm currently doing Mac Nutrition University. Um, Martin McDonald. Um, I'm currently doing why can't I think of his last name now that I'm on the spot. <laughs> of course, that's the way. Um, Joel, can I think of his last name for life of me because I'm on the spot. MMA conditioning course. Um, so uh, just still always learning. Still always trying to get better. Um, I've competed in bodybuilding under John Davies. Most of you probably will have heard that name in the fitness industry. Yep. Competed on John Davies in 2011, 2012. I've done the whole bodybuilding scene. I've done powerlifting, uh, set, set national records. Um, I've played gridiron, I've played Aussie rules. I've done everything. I guess I've done everything in terms of sport wise, lifting wise, gym wise. So um, yeah, that's, that's uh, oh, and then I, last year, uh, me and a couple of the boys did a podcast called the PT Performance Podcast, uh, which is, I guess, where sort of this has arisen from. So Yes, yes. Yeah. I will make plenty of references to that. And yes. again, it's kind of been said in a few episodes, but I'll make sure I'll put the link in there because I'm sure we will talk about that a lot. Yeah. So that's really good, Matt. Thanks for the synopsis. And again, it can't, you're like a bit of a Swiss Army knife. I mean, you've yeah. got a, a multitude of experiences. Mm-hmm. You've got hands-on. You've been in all the different sectors, if you like, to a degree. Yes. Like, you know, you get your fight and your powerlifting, yes. your strength, more yes. the scientific background. Really like how you're always upskilling, something obviously we yeah. really agree on. Yeah, 100%. Um, I think it's really important to always reinvest. I think that's obviously where a lot of people go wrong. Go wrong, wrong. 100%. Um, so now let's dissect this a little bit in your journey. Yeah. Let's, let's perhaps for the audience extrapolate some of the key learnings and principles and obviously tell it how it is because it's raw yeah. knowledge, right? Yeah, definitely. So, Let's go back to when you were first starting, first of yeah, all, yeah. and let's start with some of the biggest learnings initially. Like, so for example, you're fresh, you're new, you're still wet behind the ears in the industry. Yeah. What What were your biggest challenges? Yeah. Well, when look, when I was because I was so young too, I was so young, and I mean, it's oh, bulletproof. I mean, the things are oh, <laughs> the things we could uh, things we could go back and tell our, our past self would be incredible, but. I mean, look, I was so young and I think the problem was fresh out of the course, all that knowledge is still fresh in your head. You start to get a bit of a, a big head and you start to sort of 
think that you know more than other people. Um, that's one thing I wish I could take back and change and like, it's like, yeah, you just did your course, mate, but you haven't, don't have life experience. Yeah. yeah. Um, that, I, I think the other thing was I, I loved training myself. So, and I think this is one of the biggest, the biggest misconceptions people have about personal training is I love training myself. So therefore I will love training other people and I would love to be a personal trainer. And that's one of three hats that you wear. And even within that one hat, it is very different training someone else to training yourself. Yes. Um, and even, again, it's even very different training someone else as to training with a training partner and telling them what to do because they're your training partner. It's even different again. So, I mean, the three hats, obviously, training, business, and sales. And I think most people go in only thinking they're going to be wearing a training hat and again having a very skewed view of what that training hat's going to look like so i mean that's that was one of the biggest eye openers you go in all of a sudden you've got to keep books you've got to do your own taxes i mean you've got to try and put money away for super it's like what are all these things yeah and then everyone wants yeah. a slice of the pie right every yeah 100 percent. and then it's um and then and then that's the business side of it. Then it's like sales. It's like, well, hold on. I just know how to train. Mm. I just know how to train myself and understand movements and how to correct people. But I, like, now I've got to sell? Like, what do you mean sell? I don't want to, I don't yeah. like salespeople. Everyone hates salespeople. Yeah. Clients are gonna like just come to me, right? Yeah, surely. I mean, when, but when I was doing my course, I told people and they were like, yeah, 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 sure, I'll show you the ones you get qualified. And then you go back to them, you're like, so we're qualified. And they're like, cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 No, I'll train yeah. with yeah, yeah. I've got 20 yeah. clients already, yeah. but you've got none. Yeah, yeah you've got none. Because <laughs> what yeah, people none. say yes. and what people do, yeah. two very different Yes, ways. yeah, correct. So, I mean, that was, I mean, that was, uh, geez, that was an eye-opener at the start. Yeah. And I mean, look, yeah. even for, even for a few years, it took a while, it, took, it takes a while to learn these things. I mean, you got to remember, I was 18 at the time, so, I mean, you're very different, yeah. very different being an 18 year old. Your headspace isn't the same. Your your life skills aren't there. Your mindset's not there. It was very different at eighteen. Mm, very is. different at eighteen. But I mean, there's yeah, so <clears> many <throat> more distractions and just. I mean, it's it's tough because you can because our hourly rate does yield a lot higher than most other people's. It's very easy to get sucked into doing being lazy because it's like you do a twenty hour week. And you're making more than your friends that are going slaving away working 40 hours. And you're like, oh, how good's this? Yeah. How good is this? But it's like, bad at the time, it's like, well, that was the 18 year old, and the 18 year old wage is about 800 bucks a week. Probably not that livable. Exactly. <laughs> Probably not that fantastic. Yeah. I mean, again, if I could go back now, well, different story. But you live and you learn, and the mistakes that we make in our past is what creates a person that we are today. So, I mean, you can't regret anything. No, of course, yeah, really. it's all part of the journey yeah. isn't it, at the yeah. end of the day. Yeah. I like what you said about the three hats, actually. That was really good. Um, you talk about, you know, the training and the actual knowledge about yes. training, you know, somebody and hopefully, you know, yes. again, that's something in and of itself. Yes. We talked about business, we talked about sales. Perhaps then, let's follow that line of inquiry. Okay, yeah. Let's define them a little okay. bit more. I know you did, yeah. but yeah. let's go into them. So let's first talk about training and let's and yeah. look at, like, where, again, what you've learned and where you think a lot of trainers and personal trainers are going wrong, like not just coming into the industry, but I think there's a lot, also a lot of other trainers, we, we talk about this okay, a lot off yeah. camera, who are getting complacent. Yeah, definitely, yeah. So maybe go into a few of those little key things and yeah, areas well, where I think, you, I think that, you I mean, <clears throat> I mean, people come out of their Sir 3 and 4 mm. and just go, that's it. I'm done with now. I know how to be a personal trainer. That's like that's oh, sweet. I'm set for the set for the rest of my life. I've uh, yeah. It's like, I'm done. That's it. I'm done. I'm absolutely. I know done. it all. I know everything that there is to know about training, and now I'm gonna go call myself a master trainer, and I'm gonna try and get a hundred bucks plus a session from people. Oh, that's great. So it's it's like it's like I okay, <coughs> haven't even scratched the surface at all. I mean it's. Yeah. To me, the most important that once you start, that's just that's this that's scratching the surface. You've got to there's there's no right or wrong in training. Like you f figure out what style of training you probably prefer, mm. 
um, mm. what type of demographic you probably like to train. Um, and most of the time it's gonna be sort of what you like to do yourself because that's what you're more passionate about. If you don't, if you don't enjoy that style of training, how can you be passionate about learning more about that or delivering that to someone? Correct. So it has to sort of align with how you like to train, what you're sort of into. From there, it's like, okay, who are the best in that industry at training the way that you like to train? Mm. Like for yourself, I know most people, um, like Eric Helms. Oh, yeah. um, I mean, it depends. Like I did powerlifting, so I went more. Louis Simmons, um, Joe DeFranco. Find who you, who, who you think you would like to be similar to or you like the style of their training and learn from them and upskill from that style of training so you get better at that. Mm. Um, I mean, always learning because as we know, there's no one like... God-given way. There's, there's no one God-given way, but every client is so different that you could give three people the same program and they're all going to get very different results. Even if, if they stick to it 100% Correct. and do everything else outside of that 100%, they could, will still yield three very different results because everyone's so different. So if you only have one way that you do things, it means you are missing out on being able to help as many people as possible. Um, so while you may have the style that you prefer and you're upskilling that, you still have to expand your knowledge in every area of training and every aspect of training. And I can tell you right now, the programs that I write now look very different to the programs I wrote 11 years ago, oh, yeah. to the programs I wrote two years ago. Um, you must always be upskilling and always learning more. Um, but like I said, I find it, if you, if you learn and you sort of tend to gravitate towards the style of training that you prefer yourself, you will invest more time into learning more about it because you do enjoy it more. Mm. I mean, it's hard, I mean, like at school, like anyway, it's hard to try and learn about something that you're just not interested in. Algebra. You're just not interested in, you're not gonna learn about it. No. You're not gonna put time and effort into doing it. So, um, but there's no right or wrong. I mean, like if you're a CrossFit guy and that's your jam, go and learn how to be the best CrossFit coach in the world. Do you mean if you're a strength guy and you want to be strength, go and learn how to be the best strength coach in the world. If you want to be the best bodybuilding coach, go and learn how to be the best bodybuilding coach in the world. Like functional, like the word functional gets thrown around a lot now. Functional bodybuilding's it's become very, a it's thing. very ambiguous. Power building's <laughs> become a thing. I mean, the, the great thing is there are so many sort of cross sections now that you don't have to be niche. Mm. But hey, if you're gonna do power building, you better know a lot about bodybuilding and you better know a lot of, better know a lot about powerlifting. Mm. So, again, but if you, once you're interested in that style of training, you're gonna learn more about it, but you have to learn more about it. You have to be always upskilling, always learning. Yeah, great take. I can't yeah. hammer that home, that point home enough. Um, and again, coming from yourself with years of experience, never, always be sharpening the sword, yes, so to speak. 100%. Never be complacent. Like you said, having an idea of, where, where you want to specialize rather than yeah. being a generalist i think it's yes. good but at the same time being open-minded to yeah. change and being yes. a bit dynamic because like you well, said you sometimes come in i know one of the biggest learnings i had to kind of piggyback on what you said rich was i came in uh when i, when I even when i first yes. started back in new zealand i was like cool and i remember writing these programs yes. and my uh my boss mike was like my mentor the gym yes. owner he pulled me aside and he's like alex i don't talk about these programs I'm like, What's wrong? And he's like, no, no, he's, they're great. He says, but yes. you're training the general population. Yeah. I said, what do you mean? I hate to use that word. Yes. But he goes, well, these are very advanced programs. He goes, yes. you know, he goes, and he showed me, he goes, that, that'll do. And I said, why? He goes, for this client. And I said, really? And he goes, yeah. So it was almost that trying yes. to go too much. And I think yes. a lot of trainers come out of, you know, their studies and whatnot, and they're writing these amazing programs. Yeah. But it's like, are you actually listening, observing to your client yeah. and doing yeah. something which is more congruent with them yes. rather than just trying to go, well, this is what I've learned, this is how it has to yeah. be. But you know what, I, I think um, that's a that's an incredibly valid point, but I think that's a, the mi minority. Mm. I think there are very few that are too knowledge, are too well versed in knowledge and can't um, dumb down their programs. Mm. I think that's probably lesser of a pro uh, problem. Mm. I think the biggest problem is people are too basic have the basic knowledge and then that's they don't upskill i think that's the bigger problem like that's definitely a problem mm. um because i mean that comes to that's an definitely an aspect of training that people don't uh understand it's like well i mean 
Yeah, correct. You can go too far in. I love to train that way, so I'm going to train everyone oh, that way. Oh, yeah. The whole I think that's everyone's going to train everyone's like me. Everyone's going to train like oh, me. I think shit. that's the... Uh, that's a, that's a, touching on exactly what you just said. I mean, that's I think that's you can go too far with uh, find something you're passionate about and upskilling that, but then you've got to realise that okay, well there's um, there's le- there's regressions of that. So yes, you love that and you're here, but you're like as a trainer, normally you're going to be at least five years deep in your training. Well, and if you're not, you should be. <laughs> yeah. Another point we'll come to. Yeah. You should be you leading should by be. example. But I mean. Um, so you've got to remember, some people are starting out there one year, like their journey in the year one, you can't give them a progress year five advanced program. Mm. So it is, and that's one of the aspects of training is learning where are they on that spectrum of years training. Mm. And okay, where does my program actually fit into that for, for everyone? Like on what the program that I would gener- generally write, Okay, probably not a year one person, it's probably a year six person. So, okay, I've got to regress some of this. Yes. And that's just, um, and so there's nothing wrong with upskilling and going too hectic, but it's having the ability to pull back and go, is this program suited to that person, their training age? Mm. Probably not. But the best thing is, if you're advanced enough to be able to write a program that good, then you're going to have the knowledge to regress that. Whereas the majority of trainers don't have knowledge to write programs that good. Their knowledge base is here. They're trying to write programs above their knowledge base. And they don't know why they're setting that percentage. Mm. They don't know why they're doing that rep range. They don't know what, they don't know where's, what's going where. Yeah, they don't understand it's, the science. No, no, no. And I think that's, like I said, um, I, I think um, that's the, probably a personality thing because I think most people who are, going to go out of their way to learn more probably would probably if you looked at their skill set as a personal trainer probably communication personable skills would probably be lower mm. if there's someone who tends to be more books smart and study smart so again it's knowing your weaknesses and your strengths like what do you have to work on because if you are that way inclined with uh, books and knowledge but you're a bit less personable it's personal training you've got to improve on that yeah, you need to be able to communicate. Yeah, a hundred percent. I think uh, we do see that there's two characters, or there's, there's a couple of. I like to say there's two main characters, and there's one that's very knowledgeable that can't communicate. Yes. So therefore, they're rendered useless. And then yes. there's the person who's so angelic, everyone loves them. They're the great, they're the personality of the gym. But you look at what they give clients, and you're like, oh, that's yes. a little bit dangerous. Yes. But yes. they get by on the enthusiasm, the communication, Correct. and it's almost like finding a bit of a blend. Like you don't have to be, you know. The clown, you don't have to be no, the jester, no. but at the same time, again, you just got to be respectful and yes. professional, yes, you know. And like you said, finding your niche, you know, if that's yes. your sort of more you're a bit out there, then people yes. like that, or you're a bit more reserved, but at the same time, I think you, as long as you can yes. deliver the goods, yes, is the main thing. And yes. going back to that point you said about you, you're probably right, I do agree with that. Most people won't have that advanced because a they're not yes. passionate, they don't care, yes. they've not found perhaps what they really like or what they're really passionate about in terms of a niche like oh, there's a oh, sort of like well i yeah. just want to look good yes the barrier to entry is quite low yes well i think that's i, I think that's in probably that's probably my biggest pet peeve with the industry is people don't respect the craft enough mm. like they literally like what we said like what we said at the start they get their cert three and four and for them that's that's all they need mm. like that's it like they don't need it why why do they need more than that mm. It's almost so, education's, uh, again, and this is an Australian, I know me and Chris talk yes, about this a lot. Yes. This is kind of the issue because the barrier, okay, so say for example, say the minimum was three years or two years and it actually you needed a degree. Yes, yeah. I think that would instantly, and I'm not saying that's the feeling at all, but that would be one of the things that would instantly 100%. increase the industry standard 100%. because people wouldn't go, oh, 10 grand, like eight, eight, course. Eight, oh, it's fuck, that's, I mean, it's I'm going to call it what it is. Yes. It's bullshit. 100%. Because you get people who have no business training people. No. They can't even train themselves. And they can just pay them out of money and all of a sudden, I'm a PT. And at one stage, the worst thing was it was government funded. Oh, so you don't even need the money. So you don't even need the money on stage. And then it's like they hear, oh, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 bucks an hour. Sort of, that's me. Exactly. And that's, see, that good point there. Let's just raise that. People fo- focusing on the money. I yes. find this is, okay. 
Let's, let's dive into this a little bit, right? Because you're right. I mean, you've talked about this, you know, you, you know yes. wow, we're going to earn this much money in 20 hours, we're yes. going to $100. Yes. And we look at that and we go, cool, one, does create complacency. Two, I think the focus is in the wrong area. 100%. You and I, and I'd like to think a lot of people who we yes. follow, would train regardless. Yes. If yes. gyms were free tomorrow, yes. I'd still turn up, yes. right? If I yeah. won the lottery, yeah. I'd still do fearless training yes. because I yes. love it. Yes. And I think most people, I mean, that in and of itself is what you should find your passion, you'd be yes. successful at. But most people are in here to chase a dollar. Yes. And if that's your reason, then when things get hard or when it comes down to creating good programming and upskilling yeah. and all of these things yes. which create, I think, yes. a really well-rounded, successful yes. trainer, yes. falls to the wayside. Yes. Well, I, when you're not, when helping people isn't your, your first thought, then, and it does become about money, then of course you're not going to pay money to upskill no. because upskilling costs money. So Correct. it's like if, if you're someone who's only thinking about money, you're not thinking about when you're thinking about people and helping people first, you all you're thinking is upskilling because you're like, how can I help this person more? And it doesn't matter how much, you know, there's normally always going to be a client that stumps you and it pisses you off. Oh yeah. There's just always one. And you're like, what? Why is this not happening? I need more skills. Why is this not happening? <laughs> I need to know more so I can help this person. Correct. So when you're focusing on helping helping other people and that's your passion, then you want to upskill because you want to know more so you can help more people and you can help people in a better way. When you only focus on the money, all that you see is dollars going out, so why would you? You don't see it as an investment. No, you no, see it as no, an expense. Well, well yes. You which, see it as an expense. That's all that you see it as mm. is it an expense. And it's very much, as uh, someone described it to me, a business mentor, lateral growth in a business. Yes. And you yeah. get to a point where, you know, you, you'd hope to increase revenue in your business and then you can either spend it, save it, you know, whatever you're going to do. But then how many people then turn around and go, well, you know what, I'm going to take a percentage of this and I'm going to put it back in and buy business. Yes. That's quite ballsy, yes. especially when you get to, you know, your six figure income brackets. Yeah. Because the investments you're going to be making aren't a couple of hundred dollars yes. on marketing anymore. Correct. Or not a couple of hundred yes. dollars a week on a mentor and a course. They're thousands of dollars yes. on, again, you know, your nutritional yes. courses, your yeah. advanced, you know, strength yeah. and conditioning certs, ISSN, yeah. all of these things. I think that is a good um, little almost indicator as well. Yes. But for perhaps even people watching who are looking yeah. for a trainer, yeah. you know, look again at their qualifications. Now, it's not always the most qualified person is, is the best because yeah. we know there's, that is also yeah. not true. Yeah. But you generally want to have a look and see yes. if they've got something a little bit more. If they've been in the industry yes. for 10 years and they've not been upskilling for the last yes. five, yeah. mm, that's a red flag for you. Yeah, 100%. It doesn't matter how good you are. You, no. you should be presenting. You should be going to seminars. There's, you should be doing there's, something. There is always something to learn. There is, there is, there is, there is, like... There is no one that knows everything. Mm. So how can anyone ever stop? Yes. No one knows everything. No. No one knows everything. So how can anyone stop? There's not a single person that should be stopping because no one knows everything. So to me, it's just crazy. I don't... It's I a no-brainer. It's a no-brainer. There's always going to be more, more that, uh, that you don't know than you do know. It's like always. It's like no matter how hard you try, it's always going to be more that you don't know. Yeah. But you can try. Exactly. You can try. And like you you've said, to, if you're passionate yeah. about it, you're going to want to do I it. I said, uh, to me, it comes back to upskilling is because you're passionate about helping people the best that you can help them and you want more tools or you want more, you want to have more solutions than you currently have mm. to be able to help more people with their problems. Mm. So it's, like I said, it depends on that mindset as to whether you are going to be someone who upskills or not. Correct. And, and they're the people that don't hang around long. I mean, for sure. I was at Good Life for uh, seven years. And I saw 268 personal trainers come and go in seven years. Wow. 268. Really? 268. It doesn't, I mean, it surprises years. me, but at the same time, I know the number of PTs they have. And yeah, I and it's, do you understand uh, yeah. some of the turnover yeah. rate from people yeah. like Well, yourself. their industry average is six, six to 12 months. That is ridiculous. Six to 12 months is their industry average. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's poor, isn't it? Yeah. Well, it's because people are looking for an easy out. Like people in life, the magic people don't. People don't <clears throat> respect the craft. They're not getting in it because they're not getting into it because they want to be a personal trainer and they want to help people. Mm. They're getting into it because I can work twenty hours for eighty dollars an hour. Yeah, they're looking. That's at why they're looking at, Yes, yeah. correct. Yeah, yeah. no, and I, I'm gonna. I want to circle back to this um, a little bit later, Rich. I'm gonna create some scenarios yeah. to kind of drive yeah. some lessons. But yeah, before we, because we can, there's a lot we can say about yeah. this, <laughs> um, and. Um, 
keeping time in mind for us and, yeah. the, and the listeners. Yes. Let's have a look at now the, the second hat. Let's talk. Let's look at business again because I think although training is yes. super important, I yes. think this is where most people go wrong to a degree. Like even if you have a good base knowledge of training, you don't have to be a rocket science. You will do well. But if you do not understand business, business. if you do not yes. understand, and I hate the word sales, but it is. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Yes. Uh, you will fail. So yeah. let's. Let's talk business first, then we'll go to sales, because yeah. I think these are going to be key for the listeners. Yeah, okay. So, look, business is, a, business is a very interesting one, because, again, it people don't respect the craft mm-hmm. and don't respect the industry. It's like, if you would go and work for someone else for, four, for 40 hours a week, why would you not put 40 hours a week into your own business? So, people rock up, do their clients go home wonder why their business isn't growing it's like you, the bare minimum you should be doing is like that's the to me it's the bare minimum 40 hours mm. like 40 hours I mean you gotta make careful what you do because there's no right or wrong way to live life okay but you talk to anyone who you talk to anyone who's successful in creating a business their own business mm. and they didn't work less than 40 hours in fact, most of them didn't work less than 60 hours, to say, be honest. I, but <laughs> to me, I'm being obviously very reserved. But to me, it's like, no. it just appalls me how many people won't even put 40 hours in. It's like one of my favorite motivational speakers, Eric Thomas. He goes, I dare you. He goes, I dare you to do 60 hour weeks for 12 weeks and fail. He goes, I dare you to do 60 hours a week, every single week for 12 weeks and fail. Because it won't happen. You won't, you won't do it. You won't put in 60 hours for 12 weeks straight and fail. You'll fail when you put in 25 hours a week, Mm. when you put in 15, when you put in 30. So to me, people don't put in enough hours in the first place. It's like the business aspect of it's very hard because you're you're your own tax man. You've got to put money away for super. You have to be cautious about your spending. You have to realize that, yeah, the $80 is in, $80 in your hand. I mean, that's the problem. Sorry, that is the problem is you do get it in your hand. But it's knowing that it's not actually. It's like, it's not actually percentage is going to go to this. Yes. Percentage, percentage go to goes to rent. Percentage goes to tax. Percentage goes to super. You have to be so much wiser with your money. Mm. Um, you have to upskilling is a part of business, obviously. Um, spending time building your business, building your business. Do you have the structure and the, the template behind your business when you? make contact with someone, do you have a spreadsheet where you put in their name, their contact details? Are you collecting details? Data. Do you, are you collecting data? Like, do you have systems in place so that when you sit down with someone, how do you price present? Do you have a system for that? Do you have a system for your programming with how your clients are gonna, the, the, the best thing that you have, which is, which one of the things, if I had my time again, I would have done is set up all my, in all that spare time that you have, in working on your business was start to build my systems. Start to build all the backbone of my systems, how my clients would get their templates, how I would do this process, how I would structure everything, was I didn't have that in place. I didn't have that in place. So as I got busier, I had to try and build that on the fly because I should have been using all that time to start to build that and I didn't. So once you have that basic structure in place, as you upskill, then you just improve on the, the systems, the the systems and processes that you have in place. But <clears throat> like that's the best thing is at the start, you have so much time to do that. And that's when you should be spending the time to build that process, build those systems. Um, how is your training plan going to look when it gets to person? It may be the most basic program in the world. It may be the most basic thing. It might be, it might be leg press. It might be um, lying leg curls. It might be leg extensions, back extensions and ab exercise. But I'm gonna make that look darn good. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna have that in the best spreadsheet I've ever it. seen. Yeah. I'm gonna have, like, if that's your basic knowledge, do, the, do it to the best you've ever done. Have it in the best spreadsheet that anyone's ever seen. Give them the best warm-ups. Research warm-ups. Like, give people a warm-up to do so everyone's like, oh, they're doing fucking Richo's warm-up. They know your warm-up because they watch people do it. They're like, he obviously trains with the Richo. Give them, like, the best cool-down process ever. The stretches. Like, build your process and build your system so that it's just going to be a far superior service to anyone else you're competing with because the sad fact is that most personal trainers, their business 
is swapping a 45 minute session for time and that's the extent of their their service to a client. It's the 45 minutes and then that's it. If the exercise that they do, there's nothing else with that. There's no, um, I mean, we can talk about this later, but basic um, nutrition. There's no warm up protocols. There's no recovery protocols. There's no what to do on other days. Some people don't even have programs. They no. literally rock up, th- make up the session on the top of their head yeah, and no. put them through 45 <laughs> minutes or an hour or the half an hour and then on their merry way they go. And that's their, that's their business. It's like, build the processes, build the best service that you can possibly build with your current level of knowledge, okay? Obviously you're gonna be upskilling, so they will get better and better. Your warm-ups will get better, your programs will get better, mm-hmm. your, your cool-downs and your recovery methods will get better, your nutrition delivery will be better. The way you deliver your programs to your clientele so they can do it live at the same time between the two of you will get better. Whether you use a, a external company like my PT Hub or trainer eyes will get better, everything will get better, but you have to have the, the basic structure there first. And the best thing is when you start, and if you do 40 hours, you've got all the time in the world to build them. All the time in the world. And when you are here, and people see you working at your computer and your workshop, people go, guy, they're like, oh, that guy's working hard. Yeah. Good. I mean, you could be watching YouTube, and if you're on your shirt and your computer looking busy, people go, oh, he still works hard. It doesn't matter. Be at least be here for forty hours. At least be oh, yeah. here for forty hours. Yeah. Um, but business to me, business the biggest thing I I mean would be to get better with money. I was I'm, I was terrible with money, terrible with money. And I'll tell one of my biggest mistakes was I didn't put super away for years, mm. years because I was like. <laughs> Don't need that. I'm young. I don't need that. That's that's years away. That's so many years away. (laughs) That's not even a real thing. I mean, I mean, whatever. Yeah, young, bulletproof. Um, So something else. So you've got to start getting better at at managing your finances. And again, the same the same deal as training. The only way you're going to get better at them is to upskill. You upskill in upskill in finances. Upskill in business. Look at templates. I mean, there's fantastic people out there that you can buy incredible templates from. Um, that does cost you a bit. Again, it's investing. If you don't want to do that and you've got the time, I mean, like someone once said to me, and it was the, it was probably one of the best things I've ever heard. And it was I, one of my very good friends, Russ. I said to him, "Why don't you just pay someone to do that?" He goes, "Why don't I fucking do that?" He goes. I don't have the money, but I got the time. And that guy didn't know how to do it at some stage, and now he does. So I'm just gonna learn like he did. And it just fucking, like, I don't know why, but that just stuck with me so much. It's like, everyone didn't know how to do something at some stage. Like, you might not be an Excel spreadsheet wizard, but neither was the first person who used Excel. They had to learn how to be that wizard. And if you've got time, spend the time. I mean, there is YouTube, you could probably pay 30 bucks to get Excel spreadsheet tutorials now. Mm. I mean, there are so many ways that you can get better at using Excel. And if you've got minimum, minimum 40 hours to start working on your business, um, you can learn how to be an Excel spreadsheet master and you can start to build epic programs that people will be like, what the hell? They will fast surpass mine or Alex's because you'll have back end knowledge and back end data that we can't even come up with. So, there's no excuse for you to say that I don't know something because, because or, or there's too, or I don't, have, I don't have enough money to pay for that. It's like, okay, you don't have the money, but you've definitely got the time. So invest your time into getting better at that and mm. figure out how to build an epic Excel spreadsheet. Mm. Speak to someone who, I mean, if you don't want to buy one off someone superior, there might be trainers at your gym who you may be able to take a little bit of advantage of because they wouldn't realize their templates are far better than what you could even do at the start. And you might go, hey, I'll give you a hundred bucks to buy your template off here. And they're like, what, just a blank template, a hundred bucks? And you're like, yeah. And they might send you the templates and then you can go from there. And then make it your own. And then make it your own. I mean, you've got so much time, but like like I said, in business, it's like, you may not know something, okay? There's nothing wrong with that. You may not have enough money to be able to afford to um, learn it quicker but you have the time invest the time invest yeah. the time so um the financials the business the biggest ones for business finances learning how to sort that out because once you can get that sorted it will make it because i'm not going to act like 
we're all heroes and of course we're there to help people. At the end of the day, <laughs> at the end of the day, we still need to put food on our table and no exactly. one wants to be homeless, living on a street. So finance, finance worry is always sort of gonna be a little bit there, especially at the start. So you need to get so well versed with your finances that it can alleviate that problem sooner rather than later. So you can focus more on helping people. Mm. And then the second thing is building your systems building your systems. How is your program going to look? How are you going to pre present all of your information mm -hmm. and all of your knowledge to the person sitting in front of you to best show them that, hey, you are the right person to help them with what their problem is. Yeah. So to me, business-wise, it's finances and systems. Finances and systems. Yeah, no, I like it. And yeah. Again, I think to, to touch base on a few of those points, again, like learning by doing, yes. you know, in terms of yes. you've got the time, if you're truly passionate, yeah. You're there. One of the things I took yeah. from the podcast. And there's, well, there's another thing I just want to touch on that as well. Is Go like people are obsessed with this. People are obsessed with this. You have to love every aspect of what you do. You have to love every second of it. Mm. Fucking bullshit. Yeah. Fucking bullshit. I don't enjoy that's, doing books. Fucking bullshit. <laughs> fucking, <laughs> that's fucking not up. my bread and butter. It's fucking bullshit. Bullshit. You don't have to enjoy every aspect of it, but you have to crave the outcome. The outcome from you getting better at your spreadsheets is that you can help deliver a better service and help get people a better result. You need to crave that. Once you crave that, the shitty things like your spreadsheets or whatever won't matter to you because you know that the end result of that is mm. getting better results with your clients. Um, so you, again, look, you don't have to love every second of what you do. There are gonna be times where you're sitting there for a couple of hours going, this is fucking shit. But you've got to remember, crave the outcome, crave the, crave the end result. You're not gonna enjoy every minute of it. That's fucking fine. No one does. Oi. What's going on in here? Now we're in the dark. Oh, motion? Is it? Is it? Is it? Is it? Is it? Is it? Shouldn't be. Keep rolling. Unless they've just turned it off. But they're not, they're not gone till four. Oh, is it motion? Yeah, it's motion. Oh, it motion. I didn't know. We'll leave yeah. that in. <laughs> Turn the lights off. Yeah. I was like, oh, no, no, no. Yeah. For the people listening, uh, yeah. we just lost the lights, but yeah. we're back. Yeah. But um, no, um, sorry, so um, crave, crave, yeah, the crave, crave, crave the result. Crave the result. Crave the result. So, um, yeah, there's always going to be things that you don't enjoy. There's mm. always going to be things. Anyone who tells you that you're going to... Like, don't do a job unless you love every fucking minute of it. It's like, yeah. fuck bullshit. There's, no, there's, 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 always, there's, there's days, always there's always yeah, days. Yeah, there's always days, there's always gonna be aspects, but f from doing that aspect, mm. okay, the outcome that you get as well. I mean, like, let's be honest, when you're cutting, when you're, when you're trying to drop body fat, and going to be a slight deficit. I mean, I still wish that I could eat 6,000 calories. <laughs> like, of course I still want to do that. Of course I don't want to be in a deficit. But you have to be. Mm. <laughs> it's like, and it's like, you know what? The reason I'm doing it is because I crave the outcome more than what I want to do in that moment. Mm. It's the exact same thing. It's the exact same thing. You don't like doing sales spreadsheets. You may fucking hate it. You may hate doing the books. You may hate learning about finances. That's okay. But you've got to know why you're doing it. Yeah. And you now need comes to have some background yeah. knowledge. Yes. You, you, you just to have, have to. Level yes. Of it. Yeah. Um, so the spreadsheet, yeah. Yeah. No, no, that's good. And I think. And then if you do get to that point, you do apply yourself. This is why it's important to find something you're passionate about. Because even when it gets hard, you may not love it. That's the thing that's going to drive Correct. you. If you have not got that passion, that care, yes. and the, again, it's a superficial 100%. reason like money, yes. you're yes. going to be more likely yes. to give up. 100%. And we see, I think going back to the 40 hours a week, we see so many, I mean, even here, me and you, Rich, you know, trainers come on board and uh, where, where are they? Yeah. I mean, it's me, time, yeah. you, a couple of other trainers in here, and a lot of the time you think, wow, like, how are yeah. these people earning money? Yeah. Well, these people come on board, and I'm like, but they're not there. They're, they're not even here. Not yes. even, like you said, just get your laptop present. and work here. Don't work at present. the gym. No. Like, no. just and don't work at home, yes. work in the gym, be at yes. reception. If yes. people see it's all those little yes. things, those one yeah. percent. Well, I mean, it's, well it's, I mean that, was the, that was the biggest telltale when I was at Good Life, and like I said, I mean, 200, 268 personal trainers come and go. I knew within the first two weeks where it would stay, you would go. Yeah. Because you would either see them or you wouldn't. Mm. That was it. You would either see them or you wouldn't. But, and again, it seems nonsensical because if you're going to run a business, 
again, you should be putting the same time in. Because well, why wouldn't you? Because well, now it's your own business. You care about it more. But at the same you time, should. if well, you're you not should. there, you should. how do you expect to get clients? Correct. People rely on kickstarts and so yeah, forth. Well, but, I love to blame the gym because they pay, oh, they it's pay, it's never they pay a lot of money to the gym, so it's definitely the gym's fault. Because and the gym's the not gym, giving them enough. Well, they think it's the gym's. The gym's not at silver platter delivering yeah. them for their own business. It's like... That's not how it works. No, it's like, and if you, like I said, it comes back to respecting your craft and what, actually caring about being good at what you do and helping people. Um, and then people just, and, then, and it's like investing in yourself. Like, that's the, that's the other part of upskilling. Upskilling is like, I mean, you've got choices. You could, if you're earning, let's say you're earning two and a half grand a week. It's like, well, you know that your current skills for for the most part, for a few years at least, until everything changes and evolves and then you get left behind, mm. um, you will be able to continue to learn that. And then instead of putting money into upskilling, you're gonna put it, invest it into stocks or um, um, currency. It's like, why wouldn't you invest in yourself? In your own currency. Why wouldn't you invest in yourself? So yeah, mm. like you're going into business for yourself. It's like, you obviously believe in yourself a little bit, like you can't start, you can't start your own business if you don't believe in yourself a little bit. It's like mm. invest in yourself, invest in yourself. All the best people invest in themselves. And then I think also invest in your business to tag on well, that. In terms of well, sorry, like sorry, those yes. those those things, I think uh, to draw another um, lesson out of this is you know you start off doing the box, you start off doing your spreadsheets and all this, and then yeah. now when you get to a point, you've got to earn this right that you may outsource it, but. Yeah. If you still started by doing it, then you know. So if you do outsource it, and if someone tries to pull the wool over your eyes, yes. because they will, yes. and you go, hang on, man. Um, this doesn't add up here, yes. because you've actually done it. Like you don't need to know it, the rocket yes. science, but you might go, hang on, man. Yeah. Uh, why are you charging yeah. me for that? That, that the box? Yeah. Then all this is money going missing. Yes. And the more you earn, the more it's easier for money to go missing. Yes. Where if you started from day one yes. and you know your overheads and you know your business yes. inside out, back to front. Yeah. No one is going to be able to come in yeah. and then take a slice and go, oh, this guy's in it. Yes. Let me charge him a little yeah. bit more, $100 a week, and I'll just take, they'll never know. Yeah. So I think that's also a bit of a juxtaposition where that, it's like, even if you don't like, like it, you need, it's a non-negotiable, you have to have some level of understanding yeah. of the numbers. It's yeah. like when you ask uh, personal trainers and, you know, you sort of say, like, how many clients have you got? Or, yes. you know, for example, how many one-on-ones and this? Yes. And then some of them are like, oh, I have no idea. I'm yeah. always like, what do you mean you've got no idea? Like obviously for people who are busy yes. like yourself, sometimes yes. it's like I, you know, I have to have yes. a look. But yes. you know around about, and yes. you should know your income, and you should yes. know your overheads, and Correct. your tax, and your super, and it's basic shit. You but when someone goes, I don't know, and they're just, yes. it's like they're winging it. Yes. And you said before, uh, and, and this always baffles me, baffles me. Um, and again, there's a time and a place for this, where perhaps you know someone comes in and you do an ab libitum session, where yes. for example, you know it's it might be a new console, it might be that you've got a mom and a daughter, it might be that you know for example they bring the, a friend, they bring yeah. a friend, or it, it, you know they're not well. I mean, you got to you got to be thick on yes. your feet. But nine times out of ten, if someone's a client and they're on board yes. and they're on board as they should be for yes. a period of time. Yeah then you should have some structure, they should have yeah. some guidance, some programming. Yeah. I know we're gonna talk about this later as well, but again, it's like giving that value. 100%. And constantly yeah. um, having a, coming from a place of you know care yes. and passion where people can go, oh, well, this is why you know, Richo does this, yes. or Alex does this, or James, or yes. Mark, or whoever it might be. And then they see this, even if you're not super busy, because yes. they're like, well, this guy's passionate, this girl's passionate. Yes. Like, they are spending the time, they're yes. here, they're doing the work, they're creating these, like, even someone who doesn't know anything about anything about spreadsheets, if they look at something and it looks really good and it works, yes. they know subconsciously, fuck, some time's gone into this. this. That yeah. equals where? You scribble something out yeah. on a piece of paper. That's, <laughs> I mean, and if you're still yeah. doing that, yeah. shame on you. Yeah. You need to sort that out. Yeah. As much as yeah. people say they're computer illiterate, you need to get onto it. Yeah. Um, all right, let's segue into uh, sales. Yeah. This is a really tasty yeah. one. So let's, yeah. let's, let's get into the juicy details. Again, just let's... Well, well, I Pick it apart. What are your main, main um, again, lessons, perhaps pet peeves, where you see people go wrong, perhaps where you've gone wrong, things you've I think, improved on? I think sales is a lot... People make it far more daunting than it needs to be. Mm. I think, mm. I honestly think yeah. sales completely depends on which lens you look at it through as to how daunting it's going to be well, that word has and, a how lot of and how easy it's going to be because this is this there's two ways that you go in and sit down into sales and one way will 
leave you with less um, less conversions, mm. okay, and have you stressing far more. The other way will lead you to high, much higher conversions and you having a much easier time with doing it. The first way is looking at the money. Mm. Is looking at the money. I need, I need this person. I need this eighty dollars a session. I need to get eighty dollars. I need to get eighty dollars a week. I need to, and then it's or or eighty dollars. Or I, will this person pay eighty dollars? Eighty dollars, and all you're thinking about is the monetary value, and the whole time you're doing everything, it's all about the money. It's all about the money. It's all about the money. When you go to present, it's going to come across that you're all about the money. Everything's just going to reek money. The other way is this person, okay. If you've upskilled enough and you know enough, I have the knowledge in what this person does not. Yeah, you they have are, the cards. I, they're coming to me because they need help with this problem and I know that I'm the person that can help them with this problem. Mm -hmm. So I'm the solution, I'm the solution. I have the solutions for this person. So when you sit down, it's like, hey, these were your problems. I have the solutions to this. Do you, like, can I, can I be the, the solution that you need? Mm. And then it's yes or no. And then you go from there. And then it's like, then, then they'll throw out objections like it may be. Um, then you've got to know the, what the objection is. If the objection is money, it's like, well, A, it may actually be money, okay? And they may a, actually may not be able to afford your services. So do you have a more entry level service you can provide them? Or the other one it normally screams is they do not see enough value from your service. Mm -hmm. So again, if you don't have the systems in place and you're just swapping them, they're walking in and you're just gonna make up a session on the spot, I guarantee you money's gonna probably be one because they're not gonna see the value in that. Correct. If you're helping them with basic nutrition, if you've got warm up protocols and stretching and um, recovery protocols and points for them to hit. Mm. If you've got their program done for them on all the other days they're not with you, they're probably definitely gonna see more value in that service. You won't get that objection as much. Correct. Um, everything that, anything that they, when you go in with the, look, if they, the reason they've engaged you in the first place is because they have a problem. Like, they haven't just come up to you with no, like no reason to come up to you. Yeah, there's always like, a reason. There's always a reason. For you to be able to get to the stage of presenting, there's a reason they've come to see you. Uh, 110% a reason, 110% a reason. Um, so the objections are where you figure out what, where you went wrong. Um, but like I said, it's whenever you really take away the money and you think about your skills and believe in what you do and you figure out what they really want and what their problem is. And your your whole purpose in the consults is to find out what is their problem and how can you best help them? How can you best help them with that problem? The minute you focus on that, sales, to, you don't even end up worrying about sales because it's like, I'm just helping you. It flows. I'm helping you the best way I can. And it flows from there. The minute you start, it's all about money. That's all you're thinking about. That's where you're gonna go wrong. I'm gonna tell you that, Dan. So I, I honestly don't think um, and it, the problem is, is if you come into this industry with not much savings behind you, okay, and you're worrying about money from the start, you're probably never going to do well in the first place. And that will because shine. that will shine through that you're needing the money to survive each week. Which is why, like we talked about in the PT Performance Podcast, have some financial backing so that you can go into it with a problem with solution. The, with a little mindset. bit more relaxed yeah. and not so tense about, yeah. shit, I really yes. got to earn money because if yes. I don't, I'm... Yes, because I mean, it, I mean, I'm not going to sit, sit here and pretend like if you have financial stresses, you can still be like, I'm just going to help them with their problem. You're going to think about the money. Of course. You're going to think about the money. And the busier you get and the less finances become a problem, the more you start focusing on problem solutions, the more conversions you have, the more people you have attracting to you. It's and it goes from there. And the so it's... Yeah, which is why it's like if you can, you've got to have the money behind you from the start, so that it's that you're not you're th you're in that headspace from the start, mm. and that's what will roll you from there. And then sales, like you know, mm. when you're actually just trying to help someone, and you can show them you can show them how much you can. They might come to you with this a problem they think is this small, whereas most of us know they don't know way more than they don't think that they know. Oh yeah, it's like an iceberg. So, yeah, it's just barely the tip. You're yeah, barely the tip. So you're, you're showing them, hey. This is everything I'm going to teach you. This is everything you're going to get. It's like, wow. They start to realize my problem was way bigger than I thought it was. So, yeah, your solution's great. Let's do this thing. Mm.
let's do this thing. Yeah, presenting um, solutions. Yeah. That's, and showing value. To, to me, it's like I used to, for years, I was so worried about it. Because again, like I said, when I started, when I was younger, I was terrible with money. So money was always a problem. So money was always, when I was doing sales, I hated sales because to me, I was always going in with a money mindset. Because I guess so, you, didn't, you didn't have enough savings, you didn't have a buffer. Yeah, I got correct. a buffer, you yeah, know, like, you just, just, just like, yes. you know, you know what, yes. if, I, if worse came to worse, yes. I could still pay my rent, do yes. this, do this, have all correct. these expenses covered for X amount of correct. weeks. Which gives you financial confidence, thus leads to correct. this whole, you know, reducing the stress and Correct. not having and to be about I really need yeah. this client versus perhaps this client's not for me. Yeah. And it, I mean that's uh, I mean my, I mean I'm not ashamed of it. I used to live week to week and I know there's like a lot of like a lot of people do. Like the vast majority of people live week to week and you're not even and in our industry just in general. No, just in general yes, sorry, just in general, that's yeah. what I mean. Mm. Just in general most people live week to week. So I mean that's the that was what I had to break. Mm to be able to, the minute I was able to like break that, that habit and that mindset, then sales didn't become scary to me because it wasn't selling. It wasn't selling, I wasn't trying to sell, I wasn't trying to take money off someone. It's like, you've come to me because you have a problem. I, I know in my ability that I have the skill set to solve that problem for you. Mm. It's like, do you really want this problem solved, yes or no? Then that's what it came down to. Yeah. And again, and not having to yeah. need yeah. that person yeah, because it was like, it's not like you don't care, but you get to this point, and I think for more advanced trainers like yourself, where if someone's coming to you, then they've got to respect and, and see the value in your time and yes, your wisdom. Correct. And you're almost yes. like, look, if, if you don't want to be here, like, it, it's almost like, okay, I use the analogy of school versus uni. Yeah. You know, when you're at school and the teacher's like, come to school, and usually, yeah. you know, you people skip out and yeah. they're like, you know, they bring your parents. Hey, yeah. uni, you don't turn up, they don't give a fuck yeah. because you're paying money. Yes. You gotta come, you gotta learn, yes. you gotta ask the questions. Yes. And it, it's almost, again, I think I'll sort of segment it into two, two categories here. So you've got almost the scarcity and the victim mindset yes. versus the abundance and the growth mindset, yes. right? And it's really easy to sit in the, uh, the scarcity and the victim mindset when you're in strife, yes. when the stress is high, yes. when you're focusing on the money, the negatives, but then you turn and flip that script and you come from a place of abundance even if you might not have an abundant client yes. mindset, if you, again, you're putting time into your business, you're yes. doing everything you can, yes. you know, you're doing right on the gym floor, etc. you've got a little bit of a buffer, you're working smart, it will eventually, again, if you're good at what yeah. you're doing, you're putting in the time, the formula's there, it's a numbers game, yes. you will eventually be able to, you know, create that wealth of yeah. knowledge and that business that you want, and yeah. the money will come as a byproduct. 100%. One of the biggest learnings I had, because I really want to sort of tag onto this, I chased money for years. Okay, and you know that, a lot of my good friends know it. Um, telling myself a bullshit story that I needed to earn, you know, go and do car sales yes. and this and all that because I needed money to basically write this online platform that I needed to then become a good trainer. It's like, no bullshit, just get back on the tools, son. Lead by example, put your money where your mouth is and lo and behold, the money has came because now yes. I'm doing something I love and I don't focus, although I, I'm understanding of the numbers, yes. I, I don't um, neglect them. Yes. I'm I'm doing what I love and I'm like wow and the more I do what I love and the better yeah. work I do and the more I help people the more gratifying and yes. satisfying it is yeah. um, and the more the money just flows in yes but to 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 almost uh, believe that it's seen as believing you have to almost do it yes and a lot of people don't see that they go, oh, it doesn't work it doesn't work I'm like yeah but you're not doing it yes and you have to go out and you actually have to make this happen you have to see yes take these steps and no it's not easy and sometimes yeah. like you said you've got yeah. a transition and you should have a, you know make sure you've got enough savings don't just yes. wing it don't do yes. stupid shit yeah. that's going to put you sometimes in a bad place yes. taking calculated risks etc yeah. and and then as you said rich i think you know again to second this for for the listeners yeah. um being able to present having something to present yes. and making sure that and i think it's the biggest one for me and again, to reference the, the PT podcast was, you know, get in front of your clients, spend the time with them, listen, <laughs> listen, basic day yeah. one shit guys, to who, you know, they are, what they want, what their problem is. It might be in between the details, yes. but if you listen, yes. you relay it back to them, you care, find their why, big one, Steve yes. Sinek, find yes. the why. Yes. Why did you come to me? Yes. Why are you having this problem? Ask yeah. why, ask why, ask why. Like, yeah. they're not going to be... You know, they're not going to be like, why are you asking why? They're going to be like, wow, this person cares about me yes. rather than just be like, oh, this is what I do. Yes. Once you've formulated that pitch and you've built it out, why do you want to do it? What do you want to do? What's involved? Then you can go, great. So are you telling me this, 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 and this? Mm -hmm. Yes. Great. Here's how I can help yes. you. So you, like you said, you, you're not 
building a problem that isn't there, but you're yes. identifying yeah. where the problems are, what's going wrong, you know, getting to the root cause, because oftentimes, yes. and you know this, yes. we sit down with clients and it starts with A and it ends <laughs> up with Z, right? And yeah. you're like, shit, and we become yes. like counselors sometimes. But then you present and then they're like, yeah, like this, this is right, this guy gets yes. me, this person cares about me, and then obviously you have yes. the value, and you show them the roadmap. Yes. And, they, and, and then like you said, it's a no-brainer. Yes. And because you're not coming from that scarcity, yes. you'll get a loyal client. And yeah. then when you get to help them, the irony is then you help them, they see results, guess what improves? Adherence and loyalty. Yes. And therefore yeah. the client, who was perhaps only gonna, oh, you know, I might just do it for six weeks or whatever. Yeah. Oh, fuck, man, they're with you for six years. Yes, 100%. You know, so I, yeah. I think that's some really great points there. Um, so I guess to, I wanna circle back now and create some hypothetical situations. Okay. Yeah. So you're brand new in the industry, yeah. you're a PT, yeah. you're starting that EMF Rabina right here next week, Yeah. but you've got all the knowledge you've got now, okay? Yeah. But you as if you're starting from scratch. So let's just say you moved to, you, you did all this in Melbourne, say, yeah. right? Yeah. You did all this in Melbourne, but now you come into EMF Rabina GC, Talk us through your process, how you'd approach it, what you do, how you'd start, because I think it's going to be really valuable for people. Okay. Well, I mean... How uh, do you approach it? Well, first of all, I'm going to find out all the different... Um, all, the, all the ways that I can get lead gen and make the most of my rent from the gym. Mm -hmm. So, your rent of the gym covers the facilities, but it also covers access to the database. You've got to make the most of that. So, anyone who thinks that 360 a week is expensive, they don't know what they're talking about, they, but <laughs> they don't true. because it's not. It's it's, true. If you go out by yourself or if you pay somewhere cheaper, you have to then go and find 3,000 people to be able to advertise to or be able to pull from. Right. The gym's pre-qualifying everyone. They want to exercise. They're already in here. They want them to get better in some way, shape or form. Yep. They're pre-qualified and you, that's what you're paying for. Um, I would find out all the ways that I can lead gen from the gym and if there are any that, that people haven't thought of that I'm gonna use. Like, um, they do inductions here, so I'd be on all the inductions that I could get on. I would be getting in front of as many people as I could possibly get in front of. I would talk to all of the staff and see if all of the staff are tra currently training with anyone. And if they're not, then I would start to get, offer them free sessions and start to get in front of them. Um, because if someone new comes in and all, the and all the members start seeing a new trainer training the staff, they're gonna be like, oh, I must know, at least know something. Why are they train with him? Why am I training with the other trainers? Mm -hmm. um, I would look at the like look at the the databases. So I'd be saying depends on the system, but saying hey, is your system capable of printing off um, people that maybe haven't been in the last four weeks? So there are some systems that do that. Shows you people that have been, and I I would get their names and numbers, and I would call them all and go, hey, just notice you haven't been in the gym for the last month. Is there any reason for your drop off? Uh, go from there. If there's obviously nothing too wrong, and they just say you lost motivation, or whatever. Then look, I'd love to offer you a complimentary session and try and get you back on track. Perception is everything. People don't know that that's a free session. Correct. The busier you appear, the better people think you are, the more you're going to attract. Exactly like you said about that abundance. Um, I would be looking at, okay, how can I utilize the gym and their database and their processes that they have already? Are there any that they don't have like that that I can call upon to get people in front of me so that I can show my knowledge? I would host a free seminar. People don't know who you are up here. They're not going to respect you. They're not going to pay money. Hold a free one. I mean, look, that's tough because then you've got people going, well, if you give it for free, people won't value it. So, yeah. I mean, it's tough. It's, it's a double-edged sword. It's a double-edged sword. If you've got 40 hours, like sword. you said, what have you got to lose? What have you got to lose? If you get 10 people, that's 10 yes. more people than Nick. Correct. Zero, so, uh, you know. If they allow you to take classes, <clears throat> take classes. I mean, everyone has their different strengths and weaknesses. And as you, sure. do, as you develop... I mean, it's hard because you said new person, so I'll pretend that didn't exist. Yeah, yeah, correct. Um, so hypothetical. new person, hypothetical. So hypothetical. Um, I would start um, making sure that I'm training in the gym every day so people could see how hard I train, can start to see my style of training. Within those sessions of mine and when I'm walking the floor, I would be, if I have the ability to help someone in some way, I would help them out, which is something that you do extremely well. Thank you. Um, if you see someone doing something a little bit off, it's like, people are so, it's such a tough world now because people are very quick to make fun of someone. Like, look at that guy doing that lap pull down wrong. It's like, well, have you ever thought that 
he actually thinks that's how you do it. That's why he's doing it that way. So instead of helping, instead of laughing at him and having 10 other people behind his back laughing at him, have you thought about going and helping him and just going, oh look, have you thought about trying to do it like this way and seeing if that feels a little bit better? Correct. I think so many people are, so many people want to, tall poppy syndrome. Look, look how shit he's doing that. I know more than him. Yeah. But stop being so arrogant, go and help him then. Exactly. Go and help him then. Like, instead of making fun of people, instead of going, oh, look at that dickhead doing it wrong, or oh, look at that exercise that dickhead's made up, go and start to try and help people. Mm. So, Perspective. But yeah. Flip start, it. Yeah. Not start, look yes. at those idiots. Yes. Look at how many people I can help. Yes, correct. So start doing that while you train. So I would, I would be giving as many complimentary sessions as I possibly could give to staff members, to people on the gym floor that I think need it. I'd be taking the inductions, I'd be calling people that hadn't been in, why they lost motivation, trying to get them in. If I can take classes, I'd be trying to take classes. Um, I would be doing everything I possibly could. I would be doing, if I wasn't in a session, and if I wasn't walking the floor, I would be at reception, working on my laptop, saying hello, and being friendly to absolutely every single person that walks in. Every single person. Um, because obviously, well, I mean, that's something I have to do, probably more so than other people generally, because I do have tattoos everywhere. Um, mm. <laughs> people are, <laughs> people yeah, stereotype. Yeah. I yeah. mean, hand tattoos and neck tattoos, people normally stereotype you a little Just bit. Just the but, big softy. Um, yeah, I, mean, like, <laughs> I mean, there's been so many people, and so I talk to them, like one of my one of my current clients, um, she, she's a bit of a little in her late fifties. She was terrified of me, oh, absolutely yeah, yeah, terrified yeah. of me, oh. until I went up and spoke to her and broke down that barrier. And she's like, "Oh my god, he's just so different to what I thought." So, yeah, like, let people find your personality, and not everyone's gonna love you, and that's okay. Like, um, like, be yourself, and be yourself, and. Don't be scared of people not liking you. Don't be someone that you're not because people will pick up on it straight away. Yeah. It's the same as when we talked about the sales. If you are um, disingenuous, if you're disingenuous, if you're worrying about the money, people will know. You know, so like I fucking swear, I swear. So like I'm not gonna pretend I'm. An, I'll swear out on the gym floor on it because that's me. Mm. And if people don't like it, well, fuck them. Yeah, <laughs> that's okay. They don't have to like what I do. They don't have to like who I yeah, am. You and start. that's fine. But I'm gonna be me. I'm not gonna be someone else. I'm not gonna pretend to be someone else. Mm -hmm. And you will attract the people that that will like you. There will be there's always gonna be people that like you and dislike you. Of course. But you will find the people that like you a lot easier when you are yourself. Not this hybrid mismatch of, hi, I'm Steven person that trying to you think please they everybody. Be. Yeah, it's yeah. not gonna work. Be yourself and say hi and be friendly to people because like you at the end of the day, like the gym takes money from you because of the, you're their customer service person too. Like our industry is customer service. Remember that, smile at everyone. You're never too staunch, you never know too much to say hello and be friendly to everyone. Their, their commercial gym setting is a, is a, it is a scary place. A and it is a solo journal, a journey. It's like, it's not like, um, like, um, F45 and I, like I love all those sorts of places people knock them it's like people don't see them for what they are they are an incredible culture and way for people to feel like they belong somewhere yeah. and get fit at the same time it's like they want to go the with gym, their friends the gym, is a, the gym is a more individual journey and it's scary for people walking in like give people like a good feeling when they come here oh that trainer always smiles and says hello to me it makes me feel good when I come in here like when you go back to a cafe, they remember your name. Like it makes me feel good when I come here. Help make it, like everyone is here to better themselves. Like no one's, like that's why everyone's coming here, to better themselves. It's like make it a more comfortable environment for people. Say hello to someone that you wouldn't say hello to. Just be friendly. Just th stop trying to be staunch. Stop trying to be arrogant and big headed and you know more than that person. Make it a fun, enjoyable and friendly a place for, pe for people to be and that will come back to you because if they're not thinking about personal training then, when they are, the person that always says hello and is super friendly, they're the one they're gonna go and train with. So, yeah, that's, that's if I was to come here that's good, from man. Melbourne, that's, that's how I would attack it. Good, humility. And I want everyone to now go back, rewind and listen to that again and even again. I'll second it all purely based on I've done it. 
Yeah. I listen to the PT podcast, yeah. sure some of the things I've learned from, you know, experience and, yes. and being in the industry once yes. before and perhaps not doing it right, yes. but I'd written that down, I had a plan, I did yeah. most of that, guys, I did it verbatim, word for word, yeah. you've seen it, I was 100% here. you did, I did 100% it. you yeah. did. I still made fuck ups, yeah. I'm, I'm human and I still do, but I did it and it works, yeah. and that's the difference between people who become a successful busy PT yeah. uh, and don't because it's like doing the basics, turning up yeah. day in, day out, yeah. doing all those yeah. day one shit. Yeah. So yeah. I no, I think that's that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. But there is one thing I want to touch on which look I did talk about working forty hours, sixty hours and um like what I like what I wanna go back on that because everyone has different priorities in life. Yeah. So I don't want to sit here and make you think like do you like you've got to go and do six hours, but it's like at the start, please just respect your craft, put in those hours so that you can get to the point where you are knowledgeable enough. Where, like, if you are a really family orientated person and you only want to do 20 hours a week, it's like, okay, think about, think about the long term game. It's like for you to do 20 hours a week, but to be able to support your family and spend the maximum amount of time with them, you need to be able to be earning more from that 20 hours. Correct. So you must upskill, you must put in the time to get to that point. So then if you only want to do 20 hours because you want to be the best goddamn father in the world, hats off to you, incredible. Like, like if you're only here 20 hours a week, hey, that's you and that's your decision, like epic. But at the start, don't think that that's, like, that's okay. Yeah. That's like, like I said, I don't want you to think that like just doing 20 hours a week later on down the track is like I'm taking the piss and thinking that you're a lesser person or a lesser PT or mm. like who am I to judge if that's how you want to be? But I'm just saying like think about why do you want to do 20 hours a week? Do Are you someone who just fucking loves surfing and you just get the most incredible fucking high from surfing and you want to be able to do it for four hours a day every day? If you only want to do the 20 hours a week or whatever, hey, do that, but don't leave yourself short where you don't have enough skill and you don't have a good enough business and sustainable business where you can't afford a roof over your head. You can't afford to support you and your partner or when you have a little one or if it's 20 hours and you can you can do everything, hey, hats off to you. But well, yeah, like I said, I just sort of, sort of wanted to go no, and, no, that's and make it not sound like I'm saying, if you're not doing yeah, 60 it's, hours, it's gotta be this shit. hardcore. It's yeah, gotta yeah, be yeah, this, yeah, like, yeah. don't put, like, no, fuck no, your family, no. fuck relationships, yeah, yeah, put yeah. money, it's like, yeah. no, no, look no. at this, you've, you've got to get to the point where you can have balance. So like balance isn't a day-to-day thing, balance is over a spectrum of time. Correct. And you have to put in, you do have to put in bigger hours at the start to get your business to where you can get to there. Yeah. Now, look, I uh, will, and I'll distill that a little bit more for the listeners as well, because it's a valid point and it's a good prerequisite. And I think we, uh, the reason why that gets so far out of context is people come in, well, one, they're usually young and single, right? Yes. The, 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 and yes. they spend all the time at the yes. beach taking pictures of their ass. It's like, that's not going to help to a degree. And then you've got, for example, people who are not in that situation. You know, we, we have a trainer here, he's got a family, you know, he's juggling things, yeah. etc. And it's like, cool, my hat's off to you. Like, dude, I've got no responsibility. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like, so if anything, I've got it easy, right? Yeah. So I've got no excuses. But people look at, again, well-established trainers like yourself, etc. And then there's quite a lot of them have been on the podcast. And they go, oh, well, these guys just, man, they're charging big bucks and doing a little bit of it. It's like, well, one, they're actually grinding yes. behind the scenes, usually yes. on the online sector. Um, but also, they have earned the right. Yes. They have the reputation, yes. the credibility, the knowledge. Being able to work 20 hours a week as PT, being yes. able to charge anything over $100 yes. north of that, having your pick everything's organic yes. coming into your business meaning you know you're not doing pretty much yes. anything apart from yes. your clients talking yes. and by that stage you've probably got good marketing in place it's earned it's not yes. a right and i think yes. now because of social media and i think this is i'm glad you brought this up rich it's really important to notice guys if you're if you're a new pt or even if you're an established one and you feel entitled just have a little check of yourself and where your business is going and what you're doing um, because you may think that you deserve that but you may not be at a point where you are and those people who even are at that point yes. they don't have that mindset they're like yes. I'm here now I deserve this they're still chasing they're still yeah. hungry and that's the difference between people who make it elite because like okay. us like you you know you've got far more years under your belt in yeah. the gym than me and yet you're still just as hungry and you're just trying to upskill yeah. because you still think you know you know your value but you're like I can be better yeah. I can be better yeah. and that is why people are so damn good at anything they do in life whether that's yeah. design whether that's a, a professional athlete whether it's a you know a 
an architect or someone else, a business manager, whatever it is, anyone who's on the top of their game, they're always like, not good enough, I can do better. Which, again, you still want to celebrate the wins, you know, you don't want to always be too hard on yourself, I think that's just a little caveat. But you should always be, again, forever sharpening the sword. You can always be better, guys. You said it yourself, your craft. Respect the craft, honor the craft, always try and work on your craft. And I mean, like I said, even if, like if you are a big family orientated person, you get to the point where you're charging hundred dollars a session, you've got 20 sessions a week, you're pulling in two grand, it's enough support your family, you're still gonna be upskilling. Always. Because I mean, it's- Because how are you gonna continue to charge that money? Well, well, especially like, I think people forget how much of a new industry fitness is. Oh, like, true. I, th- I think people really forget how much of a new industry fitness is. Like, Still young. Like you go back, you go back twenty years. People weren't training in gyms. Yeah. It wasn't a thing. Like you speak to your, if you, you speak to your parents. People were not training in gyms. You, sp- you speak to like people were not training in gyms. Like, I mean, if I if I had an upskilled when I competed in 2011, 2012, if it fit your macros, had not even been invented. That it hadn't was, been invented. It wasn't was even a thing. No one even knew that that was a, that wasn't even a thing <laughs> then. It was like I was eating over a kilo of greens a day. I had to eat steamed fish. I had to eat my rice. You had the was, rice cake. As yeah. Well. <laughs> no, no rice. Oh. Just rice. Just rice. It wasn't even on the like, rice cake. It wasn't even on the rice cakes. But like, <clears throat> but like almonds. It was like everything was right to clean. Right to the, Graham, it was clean. I mean, the big, the, like I was at the supplement shop and I was, everyone was bragging about their supplement stack. Oh, look at my supplement <laughs> stack. It's like, I take less <laughs> supplements now than I've ever taken, like in my entire life. Creatine, creatine and a Just basic a fake, yeah. protein. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Whereas before off. I used to have them, define eight. BCAAs, oh, you've got to have it all EAEAs, up. whey protein, uh, L-carnitine, L-glutamine. I had the stag here and slash like, ah. Oh. And you're way more jacked and I was, strong now. Yeah, and I was, <laughs> and I mean, and I was, Food. and I was eating only that, and I, and I was, and I was giving up life events to, to, to eat that way because well, what restaurant's gonna cook me steamed chicken and fucking two hundred grams of green veg with no <coughs> oil, no butter, no nothing. Uh, so I mean, if I never upskilled and I was still writing diets like <laughs> giving nutritional advice like that to people, her clientele do you think I'd have? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not mean, many happy like, ones. And I, I mean, and that was only what are we eight nine years ago? So it's like you've to the the. And now that the now that it, it has become a norm, like high school kids are getting involved in gym, which is fantastic, and people are starting to realise it is the fountain of youth, and it is so important. So, um, like not only not only in terms of body wise, but anxiety and depression and hmm. uh, cardiovascular disease, and I mean it's just incredible what what the gym can do for people. But um, as more people are doing it, the the research is starting to become more and more in our industry so yeah and so you can always be learning so always up school always like i said just respect the craft and just even if you don't respect the craft respect the people that you're helping at that point in time that are paying you Mm -hmm. to help them and learn how to help them better yeah agreed um i want to jump into some rapid fire questions okay. Okay. before the, the yeah. my audience knows this is other rapid fire question before i do and um, because there's so much more we may have to do even yeah. more rounds because yeah. this is great yeah. stuff yeah. this is gold i want you give me your rapid fire biggest pet peeves that you see in the gym and quick solutions to fix them so let's say let's go with like three three to five anything that comes to mind because i'm putting you on the spot are we talking about trainers or people uh, in trainers or tra- goes. anything related to personal training usually trainers biggest pet peeves things that people are doing that just non-negotiable should be doing doing how to fix it for okay. example okay. I'll, I'll throw one out there yeah. trainers who look disinterested sitting yes. around on machines yes. slouching yes. shouldn't be doing that be engaged with your client have good posture be involved 100% yeah uh, on your phone <clears throat> put your fucking phone away mm-hmm. get rid of your fucking phone I mean, unless you program, I mean, on. yeah, unless, you, unless your program's <laughs> on it, the iPad. unless your program's on it, you haven't afforded <coughs> fucking, uh, haven't afforded an iPad yet, which you should have. Um, put your fucking phone away, unless it's their phone and your program's on them. Mm. Even then, that's a tough one because to other people, they don't know that's your client's phone. They don't know that's their program. Mm. It looks like you're on your fucking phone. Get a fucking iPad. Solve all the problems. Number two, if you're going to be a fucking personal trainer, respect the fucking craft. Fucking sick of it. Sick of people not respecting the craft and not upskilling. Fucking upskill. Respect what you respect what you do. Learn more. Learn more. Learn more. 
If you're gonna be a PT, be here. Fucking be here. Be at the gym. Be at the gym minimum 40 hours. Like, what other fucking job can you go, oh, you know what, because uh, there's no customers in here at the moment, I'm just gonna go home. Get the fuck back in. Get the fuck in behind the counter, you're fucking getting paid to work. Like, yeah. get, be in the fucking gym for minimum 40 hours when you start. Um, and, and like, fucking, Taking the mickey of people or pointing out people that are doing things wrong. Mm. Fucking help yeah. them. Yes. Fucking help them. Yeah. Yeah. Help them. Don't take the piss of them. They're probably my biggest ones. Don't. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> Top of your head. Yeah. And again, if you're doing that, rectify it. Um, now onto the rapid fire questions. Okay. Bit of it. Bit. Bit more fun. Okay. 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 Yeah. So I'll ask him whatever comes to mind. Okay. All right. Yeah. If you could choose a superpower, what would it be and why? Oh, if I could choose a superpower. Oh. Oh. It's a good one, isn't it? Oh, <laughs> He's one. like, oh, shit. That's a great one. <clears throat> That's a fantastic one. Um, uh, well, like a superpower that someone has, or can I make Oh, you can one? make it up. No oh, I can make like, someone oh, up. Oh, you can, you can, I can make it. one up. Yeah. I mean, um. You could have, like, slow time down and be invisible. I don't know. You can't haul them, obviously. Yeah. Ooh. You can make one up. Well, I can make one Look, I look flying. I think flying. Yeah. I think flying. It's a goodie. I mean, I mean it's good for me. <laughs> and <laughs> it's great for me, but I could also definitely help a lot of people. If you can fly, I mean, if people are trapped, you can know, save people. So, mm. I mean, flying's a fantastic one. Mm. You can do things, help people in ways that other people can't help, but you also get a benefit too. You can do fly around the world. Who so. is who's want to fly? Yeah, exactly. Want to fly. You can be the PT in London. I'm just flying yeah. there. I've got yeah. clients. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you there. Yeah. No, that's a great one. Um, if you could invite three people round the table for dinner, dead or alive, who would they be? Oh. Who are the first three people? And it could be, it could be, for example, could be one of your best mates. Okay. Three, three could people. Could be your, one of your parents. I don't know. It could be anybody. Uh, three people. Dead or alive. Dead or alive. Joe Rogan. Jack, Jack, only because he's spoken to that many people yeah, he's acknowledged in so many things the table speak would be just incredible he's an interesting character oh incredible and he'd bring a joint incredible <laughs> yeah and um, some me he, I mean he would be incredible um, I would uh, I would choose oh Louis Simmons. I would choose Louis Simmons. Yeah. I would choose good. Louis Simmons. Oh, so I would choose Louis Simmons. Just my idol. I would have to choose him. And then uh, a bit of a sentimental one. Hang on. Oh, it's going to be. I would choose my granddad. Yeah. No, Just because I miss him. For sure. No. No, I don't know. That means a lot to you, man. 100%. I get that. All right. A bit more of a lighthearted one. Favorite food. Oh, huh. I mean, Maybe it was after I mean I'm just going to say bakery because anything that comes out of a bakery is my favourite food. Uh, <laughs> and on that note, <laughs> trying to tell us to get out. Thanks, Rich. I'm making him do cardio, this fella. There we go. He's back. Again, for the <laughs> listeners, we've got a timer on the lights. We're almost there. Thanks for hanging in. No, that's um, good. Yeah, bakery. Bakery. Anything good. from a bakery. Just I mean, quickly as well. You yeah. know that one when we went up to the first lake when we went to uh, jet skiing? Oh, the yeah. pie shop. What, what is that? What's it called? Which one is it? Because I always forget. Uh, I don't know. Oh, I'll have I to feel find like out. it was Fernvale Bakery. Yes. Was there it must, Fernvale? Yes, because I I'll remember the name yes. I heard it and I was trying to tell people. Yeah. People are like, do you mean Yat the Pies? I'm like, no, it was no. way no. better. So yeah, Fernvale Bakery. What are they? They, they have 160 different types of pies. Shit you not. And they sell over, they go through over 2,000 pies every three days. I'm allowed to baffle me. Yeah. So if you're near, uh, if you're in the Queensland area, that's the place yeah. to go. Fernville. Yeah. Right, Rich. Before we go, it's been a pleasure. Thank you again for your time, that's for right. your wisdom, for your yeah. insights. Um, how can people get in contact with you if they want to reach out for coaching, if they want to reach out for questions, if they want to follow you and just learn a little bit more about who you are okay. and what you do? Where's the best place to find? Um, so I just have a website come up, so uh, rscoach.com, that's my website. I'm terrible with social media, so I don't even know my Instagram <laughs> handle. I feel I'll put like, it in. I feel like <laughs> it's richo underscore strength and conditioning, but that could be very long, wrong. But if you type in richo strength and conditioning on either Facebook or Instagram, it will pop up. Yeah, I'm terrible. Yeah. Terrible. He's too busy working one-on-one, on one, yeah. right? Look, I know terrible. That, but, uh, 
Yeah. But no. Uh, yeah. No, that's good. Well, I, as always, I'll put all those links in the descriptions yeah. below. So, guys, if you're listening on iTunes or Spotify or your favorite medium, once again, if you like the episode, give us some support. Show your support. Leave a rating and a review. If you're listening in and you're watching on YouTube, comment below. Comment. What did you like? What did you need to take out of it? What do you want to see more of, guys? This helps the channel grow. We're here for you. Thank you for all of the regular listeners. It's consistently growing. We appreciate your feedback. And uh, from me and Rich. Uh, it's a Merry Christmas. Um, yeah. And before I go once yeah. again, Rich, I just want to say, you know, it's been great coming in here and obviously listening to you on the podcast and then having your sort of guidance and support. Yeah. And uh, it's a pleasure to work alongside yeah. you, man. So it's a pleasure to have you. Thank you very much. Absolutely my pleasure. And guys, until next time, as always, Merry Christmas and stay fearless.